بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد Brothers and sisters, the reason that I'm standing over here and, and, and not here, I am a nightmare for the camera people. They want me to stand here like this, but I don't. I move. This afternoon, I don't intend to speak to the best of you. But rather I intend to speak to all of you. I remember once the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, held out his hands and said, Allahumma, ummati, ummati, he said, Oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah, and he started to cry. Allah Ta'ala said, Ya Jibreel, idhab ila Muhammad, fa'as'alhu ma yukika. Oh Jibreel, go down to Muhammad and ask him, why is he crying? You know why he's crying? He's crying for you. And you. And you. And you. And you. And you. And so this afternoon, I want to talk to all of us every extreme. I don't want to leave one Muslim behind. Sheikh, I was in a city in, New York, in America called Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh has a name, a nickname. It's called the City of Bridges. 1,194 bridges in the city of Pittsburgh. I was given a talk, and when I give a talk, I like to look at the people. I want to see who I'm speaking to. And I noticed as I was speaking, everybody in the place was looking at me, except one table to my left. Not one of them was looking at me about 10 people in the table, not one looking at me. So I followed their eyes. I wanted to see what were they looking at. And I noticed to my right was an interpreter for the deaf people because they couldn't hear. They're not like you and I who go to Salatul Jumu'ah and hear a khutbah. So they heard me through the interpreter. Allah is concerned about everybody. I was in South Africa and I visited a school for the blind. Muslims reading the Quran from Braille. Concerned about everybody. I was in the airport in Atlanta, Georgia recently, and as I was going through security, I noticed a uh, security guard with a dog. And the dog was smelling everybody. It smelled me. And I was fascinated watching the dog and the security guard. And as I noticed, there was one man that this dog was interested in. He started making noise, and he sat in front of the man, and he was barking. And I know that the dog found something. 
and it happens that the security guard was a white man, and the man who the dog smelled was a black man. So I took out my social media. I want to catch this. They're going to beat this man down. And I want to capture it. And as I was watching, waiting for the security guards to come out to beat him, as I was waiting, I noticed that the man started laughing. He was laughing, and then he walked out of the area, and I knew what happened. Every once in a while, they'll send a plant to put something on the person to see if the dog is alert. Why say that? The greatness of Allah, the Almighty. Alam tarao anna Allah sakara lakum ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. Don't you see that Allah has subjected everything in the heavens and earth for you? So the dogs, Allah created the dogs for us. Did you know? that we are so unique as human beings, our fingerprints are different. Seven billion fingerprints different. Our voice different. Handwriting different. And, and did you know, our smell is different and unique. Allah made us that way. What a, create, a creator. Seven billion people with seven billion different smells. Do you know right now they're training dogs to smell the breath of a human being to see if they have cancer? Why say that? Allah has made us different. Everybody is not the same. And no wonder Allah said in Quran, If it were the will of Allah, He would have made everybody the same, but they will not cease to differ. Why say that? Today, my short talk, I want every one of us here, no exceptions, to take a look in the mirror. Have you ever heard the term? Kaifa halukum. You heard that? Kaifa halukum? Yes? What does it mean? Everybody said it means how are you? It does, but it doesn't really mean that. The word hal in Arabic language means condition, it means circumstance. So when you ask somebody, what's your circumstances, what's your condition, because Allah always responds according to your circumstances. So today I want us to take a look at ourselves. For instance, Islam is not a utopia. It doesn't believe in a utopia, an ideal state. Things are real. People are real. And we go from one extreme to another. I give you an example. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al-mu'minu qawiyun khayrun wa habu ila Allah mina mu'mini da'if wa fiqulin khayrun A strong believer is better and more loved by Allah than a weak believer though there's good in all of them. I am not here to condemn sisters who don't wear hijab. I remember a few years ago, I had given a talk in some city in the United States. And after the program, three young sisters, maybe high school, college, three of them, not wearing hijab. They say, Imam Siraj, we want you to show us in the Qur'an why a Muslim woman has to wear hijab and we don't want no hadith. 
So instead of showing them Ayat and Quran, I asked them this question. I said, sisters, do you make Salat? They said, no, not really. I said, do you find in Quran where you should make Salat? They said, yeah, many places. I said, if you find many places you should make Salat and you don't make Salat, what make you think if I show you one ayah from Quran that you should cover, then you start covering? Because believe it, brothers and sisters, their problem isn't hijab. The problem is iman. If you get the iman together, everything else would come together. So today I'm asking the question, what is the level of your iman? You, Australia, speak English. What do I speak in America? English. But I'm not sure if your English is like my English, so I need your help. Would you help me? Okay. How many of you drive a car? Raise your hand. Okay. Question. There's an instrument in your car that measures how fast the car goes. What is it called? Speedometer? Speedometer? No? Speedometer. Okay. There's an instrument in the car that tells you the distance that the car has traveled. And what is that called? Odometer? Yes. Yes. Odometer? If the speedometer can measure the speed and the odometer can measure the distance, question. What is that instrument that measures your iman? Can I tell you? It's called an imamometer. No, I'm serious. Measure your iman. Islam is not a utopia. For instance, Allah always takes in consideration of everybody. Look at this scene with the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. A man comes to the Prophet, he wants to learn about Islam. So the Prophet said, come to salawat, five prayers a day. Allah, he said, Hal alayya gairu hunna? Is there any, anything more than the five prayers? Kala la illa antadawwa. No, no, except what is extra. Do you have to make salatu tahajjud? Extra. And then the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Siyamu shahru Ramadan. Fasting in the month of Ramadan. Kala. Hal alayya gairuhu? Is there anything more than that? Kala la illa antatawa. There's some of you right now, and you don't have to raise your hand. There's some of you right now who fast the fast of Dawood. You fast every other day. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Habu siyam illallah siyamu Dawood. And the best siyam for Allah to Allah is the fast of David. Ahabu salat illallah, illallah salatu Dawood. The best prayer to Allah is the prayer of David. Do you have to fast every Monday and Thursday? Do you have to fast the fast of Dawood? No, most people don't. But if you do, it's good. And then the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, He said, the salat, the fast, and zakat. Allah. Is anything more than that? Most of us, alhamdulillah, we pay zakat, but there's some of you who pay extra. I'm going to ask you a question, sir. Have I met you before? I don't think so. Ever been to America? Okay, good. Have you heard, ever heard of Las Vegas? You did. Might you visit it one day? I love you, man. I've been to Las Vegas, Sheikh, many times. There are many masters in Las Vegas. 
And they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. How do you know that? How do you know that? Anyway, in Vegas, the next time you go there or Google, I want you to check out a masjid called Masjid Ibrahim. Masjid Ibrahim is famous in Las Vegas because it's the first masjid in America built entirely by an American Muslim woman, Hasibullah. She said, I don't want no fundraisers. I want to build the masjid. She was a pharmacist. Her husband had died. She invested her money in real estate. And she took out of her pocket $3 million to build the masjid. Do you have to do that? Do you have to do it? Do you have to do it? Do you have to do it? No. Extra. So the man, he turned around and said, Wallahi, la azidu ala hadha wa ma'ankuhu minhu. I swear by Allah, I'm not going to increase nor decrease. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aflaha in sadaqah. He will be successful if he's telling the truth. What am I saying? Islam is a big circle. Make sure you're in the circle. I'm not going to deny you because of your weakness. Strong Iman, weak Iman, and all between. Give me one or two examples. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu Whoever sees an evil, let him change it with his hand. Our masjid, Masjid Atakwa, 1988, Allah blessed us to close down 15 crack houses, 15 drug houses on the block of our masjid. Everybody can't do that. I don't expect everybody to do that. And whoever cannot change it with his hand, change it with his tongue. If you can't change it with his tongue, change it with his heart. This is the weakness of faith. But it's faith. We don't deny that it's faith. That is not faith. So now, brother and sister, let me get to the crux of what I wanted to say, and I'm going to finish. Amr ibn al-As asked the Prophet, are you Nasa Habu Ilaik? Who among mankind do you love the most? Who did he say? Aisha. Kultu? He said, I said, Minna Rijal. Kala? Abuha, a father. Abu Bakr. Kultu? I said, Thumma man. Then who? Umar. Aisha, Abu Bakr, and Umar. Let me take Umar for a moment. Great Sahaba? Did, Allah, did the Prophet love him? Of course. The son of Ali asked his father, who was the best person after the Prophet? He said, Abu Bakr. Then who? He said, Umar. Umar important in Islam? Have you ever studied the relationship between the Prophet and Umar? It's a magnificent study. I can give you off the top of my head Ten incidences where Umar had a different opinion than the Prophet. I need, a, I need a brother to come up here for a minute. Sir, you come here. You, yes, come here. Hurry up, hurry up. Okay, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Do you know martial arts? Not really, no. Oh, boy. Now, I'm not going to hurt you, right? But you good? Right? You got relatives here? You have no relative. That's good. That's a good thing. Let me, I'm going to show, show you something, right? This, everything is going to be good. Let me see if you have enough room. What's the matter? I just want to, have, want to make sure you have enough room. Okay. Listen, listen to this, man. This is a, I, love, I love this dean. Wallahi, I love this dean. Allah loves us. The Prophet, alayhi salat wa salam, really loved us. I remember once reading in the Quran, Allah mentions Surah At-Tawbah. 
استغفر لهم ألا تستغفرهم أن تستغفرهم سبعين مرة فلا يغفر الله لهم Ask Allah's forgiveness or do not ask Allah's forgiveness If you ask Allah's forgiveness 70 times, Allah will not forgive them. True? In the Quran? Okay. The context of that, Allah is speaking about the munafikun, the hypocrites. Okay? So this verse is revealed. Uh, Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul comes to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, says that my father has died. Can I have your shirt to shroud him? And Jabir said about the Prophet ﷺ, Prophet never said no. So the Prophet actually gave him his shirt. Ordinarily, I would say, take your shirt off and give it to me, but I'm not going to do that now, right? You good? Okay. And then he said, could you lead my father in Salatul Janazah? And the Prophet stood up to lead the Salat. فَأَقَفَ بِثَوْبِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And Umar, he grabbed the shirt of the Prophet and said, يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ تُسَلِّ عَلَيْهِ وَقَدَ نَحَقَ رَبُّكَ أَن تُسَلِّ عَلَيْهِ Are you going to pray over him when your Lord has prohibited it? And the Umar kept talking to the Prophet and talking to the Prophet and talking to the Prophet and the Prophet Led the salat. You did good, see? Painless, right? Did he do a good job or not? And you know what happened? The Prophet made Salatul Janazah and the rest of the Muslims over Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. For years, Sheikh, I asked myself the question why? Why did the Prophet do it? When it appears, because he told Umar, he said, Yeah, Umar, Allah has given me the choice. And if I believe that I would pray, I would ask forgiveness more than 70 times that Allah would forgive him, I would do it more than 70 times. So for years, I'm baffled. Why did the Prophet do that? And soon after that, Allah revealed never to pray over them ever, nor stand at their grave. Was the Prophet wrong? No. Finally, I read a tafsir of Tabari, and the tafsir said, someone asked the Prophet why did you pray for him? He said, my shirt cannot help him on Yom al Qiyamah, nor can my prayer help him on Yom al Qiyamah, but I hope that 1,000 of his people will become Muslim as a result of that prayer that I made and it said that happened. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, had unbelievable vision. Now, I thought about this. Does Allah know what's going to happen in the future? Didn't Allah know that the Prophet would do that? Could not Allah have stopped him if he wanted to? He didn't. Because this man, Muhammad wasalam, he's concerned with everybody. He wants everybody to make it. Don't you see, brothers and sisters? Sheikh Abu Hamza was right. I'm saying the same thing he's saying. We have got to get to the people. Because you know what? Everybody not the same. All disbelievers are not the same. Uh, I think it was um, Umar Isa. He talked about, yeah, um, he talked about, like everyone else talked about, I think you talked about it, about what happened at Taif. Listen to what Aisha said, and then I'm going to try to wrap it up. You got a couple more minutes? You don't mind? You're not going to throw me off the stage? You bet not. Listen to this. Listen to this. Right? What was I saying? Hmm? Yeah. Aisha radiallahu anhu said, and this is her own perspective. Hal ata'alaika yawmin kana shadda min yawmin uhud. 
Is their day more difficult than Uhud? How many have studied Uhud? Work, work with me. The commander of the Quraysh fighting against Muhammad Abu Sufyan ibn Harb. True or not? Khalid ibn Walid, commander of the right flank. True or not? Ikrama ibn uh, uh, Abi Jahli, commander of the left flank. True or not? Amr ibn al-As, commander of the cavalry. True or not? Every one of them in this great battle wound up becoming Muslims. There's a companion that hardly nobody ever talks about. Few people talk about it, but yet he's there in history. His name is Washi ibn Harb, Ethiopian slave. You heard about him or not? He's famous for doing what? Killing the uncle of the prophet Hamza, radiallahu anhu. He didn't have no beef with Hamza. He had no beef with the prophet. He had no beef with the Muslims except his master say, if you kill Hamza, I will free you. So during the battle of Uhud, he was watching Hamza. He was following Hamza. And when he got a chance, he killed him. And when he killed him, he walked off the battlefield because he ain't got no beef with the prophet. You know what I mean by beef? I'm, you know what I mean by beef? I ain't talking about the food you eat. And so look at this. He becomes Muslim too at the hand of the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. And listen to what the prophet asked him. And to Washi, are you Washi? Call that now, yes. Katalta Hamza, did you kill Hamza? He said, it is as you have heard, yes. And the prophet made a very unusual re request. He said, can you hide your face from me? It's Bukhari Hadid. Can you hide your face from me? Can you imagine Sahaba always wanting to be around the prophet? But this man, Washi, every time the prophet was around, he would get lost. He didn't want to be around the prophet. Why? Because he knew the prophet, the sadness that would come to him because the prophet asked him, how did you kill Hamza? So while the prophet was alive, Washi, he stayed from the presence of the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, and he wound up killing Musama al kadhab Musalam the, 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 the liar. I want to saying all this for brothers and sisters. We're human, man. That's why Allah said, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't ascribe purity to yourselves. Man, we just servants of Allah, all of us. All of us. One degree or another. And this man, Muhammad wasalam, was so wise, and I leave you with this. How many of you ever heard of um, Murwa ibn Mas'ud? Murwa ibn Mas'ud? Heard of him? Treaty of Hudabiyah, a magnificent document. The first one among the Quraysh was a man named Urwa ibn Mas'ud to negotiate with Muhammad. And Sheikh, I don't know if you've studied his life. This man must have been a diplomat because he said, I have visited Muluk, I have visited kings, I have visited the, the, uh, the uh, Roman Empire, uh, the Empire of Rome, the Empire of Persia, and the Empire of Ethiopia. And he noticed something. He said, I've never seen any of the followers be treated like the followers of Muhammad treated him. Every time he ordered them to do something, they were quick to do it. And he gave this long list of things. And he went back to Quraysh, Quraysh and said, you should accept this. Do you know he became Muslim? Can I give you one more? Suhail ibn Amr. He's the one negotiated with the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. He's the one that the Prophet said, say Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, no, if we believe you're the Prophet of Allah, we wouldn't have fought you. So forth and so on. He became Muslim. This treaty 
should be studied by the Muslims over and over again. One of the things you notice about the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, few people mention it, that this was not a back door, you know, negotiation. The prophet by himself with the Quraysh. No, in front of his own followers, they saw the whole thing. The Quraysh, one by one, they're going back and forth. But the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, did it in front of his whole, all of his companions. I close with this. We have a lot of work to do here in Sydney and in Australia, in the United States, in Canada, in England, and around the world. We are the servants of Allah, and we're here to serve. We're not here to judge the people. Let Allah be the judge. And if you see all the people, even who fought against the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, became Muslims. We're the servants of Allah. Everybody is different. We have different levels. Those who have high iman help those who have less iman. May Allah bless you, bless this conference, and I make dua, Allahumma inni a'udhubika min ilmin la yanfa'u. I seek refuge with you from knowledge that doesn't benefit. May you get knowledge at this conference and go home and be a better Muslim, be a stronger Muslim. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.